Hello, I'm David Hilscher. I'm a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and of course those evangelists, science evangelists won't tell you. I'm here to talk about the idea that you would be crazy thinking that Einstein's wrong, that the Big Bang's wrong, that plate tectonics is wrong, that particle physics is wrong. The idea of crazy and of course it comes down always to the same thing emotion crazy is not something we use in a technical term unless the person is really uh, you know uh, literally there's something wrong with the wiring of their brain we use crazy as an emotion emotional thing to to berate someone to lower them to make them feel worse bad uh, lesser than us so when you say some, oh, you're crazy to think blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not the way it would work in the court of law. That's not the way it would work, should work in education. It should be, oh, well, you think that, why? That's what the critical thinker actually says. If a person comes up and gives you an idea, oh, Einstein's wrong. Well, oh, why? Oh, you're crazy. The other thing they do is they say, it's proved by millions and millions of people that millions of people around the world teach this in, in tens of thousands of universities. That's not an argument for being right. It means lots of people are saying it, doesn't make it right. And this is something that uh, it's repeated in, in, in over and over by people making and defending the idea that Einstein, that Einstein can't be wrong. For instance, our fa my, one of my favorite physics evangelists, Mr. Neil uh, deGrasse Tyson, just laughs and scoffs at the idea of Einstein being wrong. Literally just laughs at it. That is not a scientific answer. Go look at my little um, uh, vlog on, on that particular subject. You'll see him literally laugh. So if you're looking at this from a, a logical sense, if you're trying to make sense of it, you're trying to grapple with the idea, well, can all these things be wrong? Remember that these reactions are emotional. They, are, they have nothing to do with science. A laugh from Mr. Physics Evangelist means nothing. There's, there's no argument there. Saying it's repeated a million times, therefore it's right, doesn't mean anything. Even Einstein said a thousand pro, uh, uh, a thousand experiments can prove me right, but it only takes one to prove me wrong. It's emotional. And why is it emotional? Because if it's wrong, if the way science right now is in a huge mess, lots of problems with it. Lots of engineers know this. A lot of people know this. They're silent about it because of peer pressure is very great. Now, one of the things you also hear from these, if you go and talk to somebody, oh, I'm going to go to my pro pro college professor, David, and I'm going to talk with them. And the college professor, professor will say, you know, I get a lot of emails from people saying Einstein's wrong. I get them all the time. I just sort of gave up trying to answer them, or I try to show them the way, but they're hell-bent and, you know, they're, they're just crazy. Um, well, ask your, I have a question back to your college professor. You don't get those about Newton. You don't get those about uh, other people who are scientists. For some reason, you get it about Einstein way more than other people. Why? Have you ever thought that he may be actually wrong? Why do all the people concentrate on him? You know what the answer is? You know what they say? They say because they want to be the next Einstein. And I've already talked about that. That is an ego thing. It has nothing to do with science. It has to be about feeling important, feeling loved. Nerds want to be loved. Feeling that you have power. And that's what happens in these gangs of scientists. They all just laugh. They said, "Who you want to be the next Einstein? Well, that's why I've heard it, heard it, heard it from these people. And they say, yes, the reason I get it on Einstein and no one else is because they want to attack the biggest guy. Not because maybe lots of people, thousands in fact, we know thousands of people around the world have actually found him wrong in a myriad different ways. So maybe he's actually wrong.
Um, one of the things is, too, is that why is it that when you tell someone and you give them great evidence that they end up saying, well, you know, I choose to not go with that. I choose to believe I'm still correct. I showed, uh, I gave a link to my movie and gave her a free viewing of my movie, Einstein Wrong, Miracle Year. Somebody in my who used to work with me uh, at my computer job, and she goes, wow, that was a great film. You know, you could be a filmmaker. And I said, well, I am sort of a filmmaker. I made the film that technically makes me a filmmaker. So yeah, and she said, I loved it. You could be a filmmaker. I am. I made a film. She really, but you know, I'm just going to have to stick with um, uh, believing Einstein's correct. I, I won't go there. I'm trying to figure out when science has been sort of um, a an idea of choosing, like you choose your ice cream that you're going to eat, or you're going to choose a car you're going to buy. Well, you know, I choose to be on this side of the issue. So I think that when you hear people say that, what they're really saying is, you know, I don't want to be bothered with changing my worldview. Uh, Lori Gardy, one of my new favorite uh, scientists who was at the conference and gave some talks and really interesting stuff with fractals in the universe. Um, she ha told me a story, and I've told this story again, but I'm going to say it again. Basically, talks to the people around her who are real physicists in their, in their minds, and they are mainstream physicists, that they ended up saying, oh, okay, 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 you may be right, this stuff may be wrong, but I don't want to change my worldview. People get to a point where I'm too tired to fight. Dr. Karazani and Dr. Alvarez, who won the Nobel Prize, he says, look, I can show, here's why I say it's wrong, because I'm too, too old to fight. So people don't want to change their worldview, they make a living at it. Maybe you're a geologist and you make a living at uh, knowing that uh, you subscribe to play tectonics and therefore everything you do is under that um, model. And if you go against that, maybe you won't get hired. Maybe you're a physics teacher in a university, no, an engineering teacher, and you allow students to argue against things like the Big Bang, and then all of a sudden your students start uh, my professor, he be, he's like teaching heresy. He says, maybe there isn't the Big Bang. So you stop. you got to make a living. And a lot of the people who are outside of mainstream don't make a living at it now, are away from their jobs and say, too bad. I used to be a NASA scientist, and I can go out there and tell you that, in fact, general relativity doesn't work, is not observed. What we observe is bending of light in coronas, but outside the corona, it doesn't bend. Space-time isn't bending anything. It's not happening. But I can do that now because I don't make a living out. What can you do? What makes it different? What made me different? What made a lot of thousands and thousands and thousands of people different who know Einstein's wrong, the Big Bang's wrong, um, general special relativity is wrong, um, particle physics is wrong, and that is we look at data ourselves. We do not take and look at things, as I say, on faith. And they don't sit in front of the, the Discovery Channel and watch strings being drawn on in beautiful graphics and say that strings are real. And yes, we're solving those little places Einstein got it wrong, or not right, he just didn't get it all. Of course, he's right forever. So, we look at data for ourselves. We look at everything ourselves. We examine it. So if someone came up to you and said, Einstein's wrong, would you look at the data? <laughs> Sometimes I get this answer from people who, of course I would. I, I'm sure I would, but I'm sure we would find the flaw. And so they do what I call the, the, Death, Star, um, the Death Star attack on your theory. Just like Luke Skywalker, you know, you get this huge thing. You don't think, oh, uh, yeah, if you just shoot it right there, one little thing will blow up the whole thing. 
uh, it's great for movies. And that's what they think. Oh, look at this. Um, this equation on line 7 doesn't match Einstein. There's your mistake, Karazani. It's, you got this wrong. These are two things that are equal. They're different. Even though they're not mathematically and physically, we say it. And this is the way we've shown the der derivation all around, all around the world. But no. So they don't look at it. They pretend to look at it. If you really sit down and look at it, thousands of people have. And those thousands of people are now a group of people called critical thinkers, a lot of them in our group. And we look at this stuff. We look at the data. We even look at our own models and see where we didn't do it. Our, our particle model, we got diffusion wrong for a year and a half. We had to go back and rehack the universe with a particle model. So the idea that someone's crazy to go against the mainstream and what seems to be given is not a scientific explanation. It is an emotional one. It's why when someone tries to put you down, what they're doing is they're not trying to put your science down. They're not trying to put their arguments down. They're trying to put you down. They're trying to put social pressure. Like, you know, a bunch of monkeys. And these monkeys will go, oh, oh I'm, an, I'm the alpha monkey. And, and that, that's what it is. It's not like, well, I'm a monkey. I've got this stick. And yes, when I poke it in here and it comes out, it comes out with something very delicious. And I eat it and I can't reach it without this stick. And the alpha monkey comes, throws that stick and throws it away. You can't do that. One. No different. Turn into animals. So it's sad. It's very sad. We teach universities wrong. Sad. I'm going to do a whole segment just on that. How universities do everything wrong. They don't teach critical thinking. They teach status quo and regurgitating. And anyways, I hope you enjoy my little rant about crazy being how are you you're crazy to believe all this stuff is wrong and i'm wearing my t-shirt in dedication to my mom lost her this year this is kind of a fun t-shirt uh she was such a great sport came along i like this one too it says coming 2007 actually the film didn't come out until 2014 my documentary mentor said documentaries take on the average five to seven years ah ha, i'll do it in a year very right. And if you haven't seen, you should take a look at it. It's a very touching story. My mom was a great sport, a loving soul, really amazing. Got to really know a lot of these crazy scientists. And she'd be the first to say, yeah, they're eccentric, but they're not crazy. Actually, they're very brave. So dedicated to you, mom. Miss you. Um, so remember, always, 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 don't take what anyone says to you on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm your science therapist. I will help you become a critical thinker. Ciao for now.